Hi, welcome to my channel, Jabberte. Uh, today I'm going to go over two chapters, uh, 50 questions as a review for exam number three. Quadratic functions, power functions and polynomial functions, graphs of polynomial functions, rational functions, modeling using variation, graphs of exponential functions, exponential functions, compound interest and continuous exponential functions, graphs of logarithms, logarithmic functions, and finally exponential and logarithmic equations. Let's get started. The first 33 questions are true false with justifications. Uh, number one, the function f of x equals 3 to the power x is an example of a power function. True or false? Uh, 3 to the x reminds us of y equals a times b to the x and that is exponential function. Power functions, they go like this f of x equals k times x to the power b, where k is the coefficient of the power function. For example, for power functions, that is called power function. Uh, for example, y equals x to the second, y equals x to the third. These are called power functions. Exponential functions, if they are gross they go like this and dk will go down like this so this is an exponential function with a equals one and b equals three so it's an exponential growth function for the statement here we say it's false that should do it for number one number two The function f of x equals, as written right here, has a degree of 3, degree of 3. Uh, it's, it could be misleading for some students because this one is written up front. If we write it in descending order, this should be up front. So the degree is 6. The degree is 6, not 3. So again, it's a false statement fifty questions to give you a quick overview uh, you know some of them they go quick as you could see uh, number three the variable y varies directly with the square of x so when it were when it varies directly with the square of x we say f of x or y equal I have x to the second to start with if y equals 12 when x equals negative 3 so negative 3 for x corresponds to 12 for y we do have a constant of variation as k the equation describing this relationship is y equals negative 4 times x to the second if that is true we end up with k equals negative 4 but solving for k if you want to solve for k that's one option, or you could just test it by plugging in negative 3 here and 12 here. Let's solve for k. So 12 for y equals k times negative 3 to the second. We have 12 equals k times 9, or 9k. Solving for k, dividing both sides by 9, k equals 12 over 9 simplifies divide by 3 divide by 3 that's 4 thirds so k is not negative 4 as they claim so the statement is false number 4 when f of x equals e to the x 
is vertically stretched by a factor of 3. So we have 3 up front. So far, so good. Reflected across the x-axis. That's the negative sign up front. That's also good. Then shifted left 5 units. And that is good. Affecting x right here by 5. X minus negative 5 means we're going left 5 units. So this is good. The statement is true. Number 5. When f of x equals e to the x is vertically stretched by a factor of 3. That's the 3 right here. Reflected across the y axis. So x is being replaced with minus x. And then, which is true, and then shifted up 5 units. This is going up 5 units, which is true. So the statement is true. Number 6. The balance of an account with an initial deposit of $1,000 that earns 3.2% interest compounded monthly can be modeled using the compound interest formula A of T equals as stated right here. The formula is A of T equals the principal multiplied by 1 plus R over N, the number of times compounded per year to the power n multiplied by t the number of years. That's the formula. So if we want to write this with the given information, that should be 1000. So that's so far so good. 1 plus, we need to write the interest rate as a decimal. It's 3.2%. That's 3.2 over 100 or just move the decimal to the left two places. This becomes 0 0.032. So 0 0.032 divided by compounded monthly. Monthly means n equals 12 to the power 12 times t. We don't know the number of years. So the statement is false. Two reasons for that. First of all, the one is being added on top in, in the numerator. That's the first reason. That should be out. The second reason is 3.2 is not written as a decimal. I know it looks like a decimal, but it's just a number. It should be converted to decimal form. We should divide that by 100. And the plus 1 or 1 plus should not be on the on top of the fraction bar, it should be outside. That's the two mistakes. That should be here, and that should be there. So the statement is false. Number seven. It says the domain of this function as a log function is negative two to infinity, including negative two. Uh, before we move on, we have y equals log could be base 10, could be base 3, doesn't matter. They all go like this. If there is no number up front, we have also 1, 0 as an x-intercept. 3 to the power uh, 0 equals 1 for x if you want to double check so y is 0 3 to the power 0 equals x which is 1 anything raised to the power 0 is 1 the domain for this function right here is x greater than 0 which is from 0 to infinity not including 0 the y axis is a, a vertical asymptote so, 
the statement is false it should be negative 2 to infinity and the reason is the following we have for our function x plus 2 should be greater than 0 the argument should be greater than 0 as we did right here subtract 2 from both sides and I get x greater than negative 2 which means greater than not greater than or equal so the domain should be from negative 2 to infinity not including 2 because of this part right here we call it false so let's just point to it that's number 7 number 8 the domain of this function is negative 3 to infinity let's double check we have x minus 3 should be greater than 0 add 3 to both sides x should be greater than 3 so the domain is from 3 to infinity not from negative 3 to infinity so this one is false number 9 uh, to add to this by the way this graph right here is a graph that is shifted to the right three units so when we go one two three it should be going to the right that's when you subtract three from x you go right three units and that should be three the vertical asymptote will be moved also three units to the right so the vertical asymptote is actually x equals 3. That's why you are to the right of 3. Number 9. <laughs> the variable y varies directly with x. If it varies directly with x, it should be y equal k times x. This right here is not directly, so we call it false. We call it, this right here, varies inversely, not directly. <clears throat> Number 10, the axis of symmetry is y equals 1. This is the axis of symmetry. And I'm going by one this way and by one this way, as you can see the one right there, which is x equals one, not y equals one. Y equals one is a horizontal line. So the statement is false. Number 11, the y-intercept is zero, negative eight. This is the y-intercept which is true 0 negative 8 or at y equals negative 8 true number 12 <coughs> has a 0 at negative 2 0 that's negative 2 0 with even multiplicity this is true and the reason we say the graph touches the x-axis and bounces off and that is called even multiplicity so the statement is true number 13 same graph has a 0 at 4 0 that's this one here that's 4 0 so far so good with multiplicity exactly 1 and that is true to describe it we say the graph crosses that's for 
exactly one crosses the x-axis and appears almost linear that is a true statement number 14 the behavior of the graph at the 0 4 0 crosses the x-axis and appears almost linear 4 0 again the same point 4 0 that is true so the multiplicity at 4 0 is exactly 1 just to confirm and make sure everything is clear I'm just almost repeating myself here and that is true number 15 the function has a possible degree of 3 with a positive leading coefficient if it's a degree 3 and a positive leading coefficient it should look like this that is when a is greater than 0 and the degree is 3 however if a is negative the leading coefficient is negative and the degree is 3 it's going to go down back up then back down so we do have a degree 3 with positive leading coefficient as you can see it goes up then down then back up so uh, this is a true statement to even confirm more and write the equation we're not uh, asked to write the equation here but let's take care of it and do it so we have y equal a times that's the leading coefficient x plus 2 to the second at x equals negative 2 we have a double zero as you could see it bounces back touches the x-axis and bounces back and at x equals 4 the factor is x minus 4 to the first because it crosses the x-axis at x equals 4 now if you need to find a the exact value for a we're not asked for it one more time but we could use this point which is 0 for x and negative 16 for y let's find it to do that I'm gonna plug in 0 for x 0 for x and negative 16 for y to solve for a this becomes negative 16 equals a times 0 plus 2 it's 2 to the second which is 4 times 0 minus 4 that's a minus 4 to the first 2 to the second is 4 4 times negative 4 is negative 16 negative 16 times a is negative 16 a divide both sides by negative 16 or mental math that implies that a is 1 so the equation is f of x or y equal positive 1 multiplied by x plus 2 to the second times x minus 4 to the first and that is the equation with possible leading coefficient degree of 3 2 from here 1 from here will make it x cube that should do it for number 15 to keep it in the frame number 16 is for the function f of x equals as stated right here the domain is negative infinity to 2 2 to 4 and 4 to infinity not including 2 or 4 that is true so when you look at the domain you want to make sure that the denominator is not equal to 0 because we're not 
supposed to divide by zero, it doesn't have a meaning. So by setting the denominator equal to zero and solve for it, we end up with x equals two and x equals four. So we say the domain is all real numbers except these two numbers, because these two numbers, either one of them will make the denominator zero. Two here will make this zero, zero times something is zero. Same thing for four. As an interval notation, we're saying everything except two and four. So graphically, this is two and this is four, everything except two and four. That's my domain. As an interval notation, we say from negative infinity to two, not including two, union from two to four, not including four, and not including two, union from four to infinity, which is right here. So the statement is true. That is true. You could see it's the same question, but I don't want to make it lengthy discussion for one problem. I'm uh, making it like one idea for each uh, page. This function right here has a removable discontinuity at x equals 2. Well, for x equals 2, which comes from this part right here only, so we're focused on what makes this factor in the denominator zero. When you have a zero that is caused by a factor like this, which does not cancel, it's called a vertical asymptote at x equals two. If you go back to the basics, y equals one over x has a vertical asymptote at the y axis because the graph is like this. And if you shift it to the right, two units, for example, if I just focus on x minus two, the graph should look like this. You go two units to the right, and you graph it. So it has a vertical asymptote at, trying to stay in the frame, at x equals 2. So that is uh, not a removal discontinuity. Removal discontinuity means a hole in the graph. That is not true. It's a vertical asymptote. So the statement for number 17, try not to rush and make mistakes. So the statement is false. It's not a removal, it's a vertical asymptote. Same problem. That confirms what we discussed just a minute ago. This is a true statement. We just discussed it. At x equals 2, that caused, causes this factor in the denominator to be 0. We do have a vertical asymptote. That is true. We have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Number 19 is false. And let's see what's the reason for that. If you simplify or multiply the top and bottom side, we end up with f of x equal. We have 1 x to the second plus x, which is 5x minus 4x plus or minus 20. That's minus 4 times 5. And down below we have 1 x to the second minus 6x minus 4 times minus 2 is plus 8. Notice that here we have same degree. We pay attention to the leading term of the numerator and the leading term of the denominator. They have the same degree and with the leading coefficients, one in each one of them. So the horizontal asymptote, since we have the same degree, same degree, meaning we have a horizontal asymptote at y 
equal the leading coefficient of the numerator divided by the leading coefficient of the denominator which is at y equals 1 not at y equals 0 so we call it a false statement that's number 19 number 20 this function has the domain negative infinity to infinity which is true why this is true let's go back to basics if you have y equals 3 to the x the graph should look like this going through 0 1 which has a domain of negative infinity to infinity but what happens when you graph it with x minus 5 as an exponent the graph is gonna take it to the right five units so <coughs> graphing it let's go f of x equals 3 to the power x minus 5 and this is x and y axis we're gonna go to the right 5 1 2 3 4 5 so this point becomes right here that's called the key point and the graph should go like this so it's almost like we're moving the y-axis from this location to the 5 location still goes all the way left and all the way right it might not look like it's going right but it is not limited with a vertical asymptote so it goes all the way to negative infinity so <clears throat> another concept this is 0 1 that should be 5 1 those are called key points so the statement is true number 21 this has a range of 0 to infinity we just graphed it at lives above the x-axis which is true we say the range for exponential functions that are not shifted up or down is y greater than 0 which is 0 to infinity so this is a true statement number 22 we know how the graph looks like the horizontal asymptote is the x axis or differently y equals 0 so we say yes the statement is true number 23 this graph is shifted up to units has the horizontal asymptote y equals uh, 2 this is a true statement and let me show you why let's say I want a graph both graphs on the same x and y axis i'll do one for the original in blue y equals 3 to the power x let's call it y1 and i'll do y2 equals 3 to the power x plus 2 notice the plus 2 is not for the x it's outside so the first one will go through 0 1 as our key point and will go up as a growth function if you shift this point up to units you're gonna go just like this and this would be if this is one that's two that's three so that's a, at three and this one is at one now here's something you need to know uh, it's a good to know that the horizontal asymptote will move up two units it was at y equals zero so by moving it up two units it's going to be at y equals two which is right there that is my horizontal asymptote this right here is y equals two as a horizontal asymptote which is this number here 
that we have. So y equals 0 also moved up two units. Think about it this way. Or you could think about it uh, as from the key point. From the key point looking down, the horizontal asymptote is one unit below it. This key point, the horizontal asymptote is one key below it, which is at y equals 2. So that is a true statement. Number 24, and we're almost halfway. I have 50 questions. f of x equals 3 to the power x minus 7 has a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative 7. That is also a true statement. Just like the previous one. So instead of being at 1 as a key point, you're going to take this down 7 units. From 1, you go down 1 unit, 6 more, you will be at negative 6. So the graph should look like this. 1 unit below it will be our new horizontal asymptote, and that is at y equals negative 7. Or think that you're going from y equals 0 down 7 units. You'll be at y equals negative 7 which is true and which is from here. Number 25, it says 3 to the x has the y-intercept at 0, 1. We talked about that enough times. That is a quick one. It's a true statement. And you know how it looks like. It doesn't hurt to keep repeating. Just to get used to it. This is 0, 1. If it has no adjustments, no transformations, it's going to go through 0, 1. We will have some questions with some adjustments. Here's one that has a vertical stretch by a factor of 5. Has the y-intercept at 0, 5, which is a true statement. So the graph should go like this, and it's not graph to scale, that should be 0, 5. Let's confirm and double check. <coughs> so you have f of x or y equals 5 times 3 to the x. Usually when I do the times, I have to make sure that it's not doesn't look like a decimal. So if x equals 0, that's 5 times 3 to the power 0, and anything raised to the power 0 is 1, so that is equal to 5 times 1, which is 5. So if x is 0, y is 5. In general, this is what you want to keep in mind, a times b to the x has a y-intercept of 0, a. In this case, a is 5. And in the previous problem, let's take you back. This right here has 1 times 3 to the x. So a is 1. That is my 0, a. Okay. That should do it for number 26. Number 27 has the y-intercept of 0, 1. Well, 27 is false. It's neither 0, 1 nor 0, 5. The reason why, if you think about y1 equals 5 times 3 to the x, we just talked about that, and this is 0, 5. But since you are shifting it up one unit, as you could see, so y2 equals 5 times 3 to the x plus 1 outside, that's going to go up one unit. So this point should be 0, 6, not 0, 1, 
or 0, 0.5. The y-intercept is 0, 0.6. So if you want to fix that, it's 0, 0.6. That's why it's a false statement. Number 28. This function right here has the range negative 6 to infinity. Let's double check. So if you graph also y1 equals 3 to the x, compared to let's do this right here go down maybe more and if i graph 3 to the x in blue that's 3 to the x that is y1 equals 3 to the x crosses at 1 on the y-axis has a horizontal asymptote which is y equals 0. So the domain for this right here is y greater than 0. If you graph y2, which is 3 to the x minus 6, shifting the graph 6 units down, that's 1 unit, 5 more will be right here at negative 5. That's 0, negative 5. So the graph should go like this one unit below it you will have the horizontal asymptote which is at y equals negative six so the domain should be greater than y greater than negative six or as an interval notation from negative six to infinity so that is a true statement true Okay. Number 29. Is this true statement? Let's work on the left hand side and see if it ends up exactly like the one on the right hand side. Well, the left hand side says 4 log x minus 1 third log y. One of the formulas says log x to the power m is equal to bring the m up front that's called the power rule m log x to take back m back in we see it as an exponent right here so i'm going to take the four back in i'm going to take the one third back in so the left hand side becomes log x to the four minus log y to the one third and anything like that that's an exponent of one third that means cubic root to the power half means square root which equals log x to the four minus log cubic root of y there's another rule that says log x minus log y is equal to log x divided by y. That's a quotient rule. So applying this on the left, that becomes 1 log x to the power 4 divided by cubic root of y. And that is exactly the right hand side. So this statement is a true statement number 30 the function in vertex form is 2 multiplied by x minus 1 to the second minus 9 well x to the second y equals x to the second we know how it looks like and we could read from here that the vertex for this function is 1 comma negative 9 this point here is 1 comma negative 9 so the vertex is fine but the leading or the scale factor 2 is the problem why notice this right here I'm going by 1 and I'm going by 1 right here. That should be 
one one it should not be two so f of x has to be one times x minus one to the second minus nine you could solve for a by using the y intercept negative eight but that shows that it's not stretched vertically by a factor of two it's just one you could read it from here or you could just write a here and plug in for x equals zero plug in for y negative eight solve for a a is going to end up one so a should be one not two so this statement is false number 31 31 is true the function in vertex form is two times this one here we could see that the vertex is one four so that is true notice right here what i mentioned earlier that we do have a scale factor of two see this right here that is an indicator that a is two which is true one more time you could use zero six to solve for a how by doing the following y equal a times x minus one to the second because we confirmed the one four and plug in here zero plug in here six that's my y intercept six equals a times zero minus one which is negative one to the second plus four negative one to the second is just one so six equals one a or a times one just one a plus four subtract two subtract two so uh, subtract four i'm thinking about two already subtract four that cancels so a equals two that is true so this statement is a true statement okay number 32 the axis of symmetry is y equals one we had a similar one earlier but as i said it doesn't hurt to practice more this is the axis of symmetry it's x equals one not y equals one so this is false Number 33, the y-intercept is 6, 0. No, it's 0, 6. 0, 6. So it's false. Number 33 is false. That's a quick one. State the domain. The domain is all real numbers, except what makes the denominator equal 0. So the focus is right here. Solving x to the second minus 9 equals 0 that is x minus 3 times x plus 3 equals 0 which is x equals 3 and x equals negative 3 that's from here that's from here it doesn't have to be in order these numbers will cause the denominator to be 0 should be excluded from the domain so the domain should be all real numbers except 3 and negative 3 or differently from negative infinity to negative 3 union from negative 3 to 3 union from 3 to infinity and not oh sorry we're done with the true false statement state the domain that is the domain in short we say all real numbers except negative 3 and positive 3 number 35 Given the function, state the x-intercept. To find the x-intercept, we need to set y equal to 0. And if this whole fraction or rational function is equal to 0, that means we need to focus on the numerator. But the thing in this problem is we have something happening about x equals 3 here. 4 times x minus 3 times x plus 5 all divided by x squared minus 9 which is x minus 3 times x plus 3 
So if these are different, we just take it from the top side because zero over something is equal to zero. But what happened is if you set the numerator equal to zero, we end up with x equals three and we end up with x equals negative five. But the denominator has a zero here at x equals three. Because it repeats right here, it's not an x intercept. This right here, we discussed it in different problems. It's a removable discontinuity at x equals three. So it's not continuous at x equals three. And graphically, you'll see a hole in the graph. It's not defined. So what are the x intercepts? The x intercepts, it's only one at x equals negative five only. This is not a zero for x or the, for the factor x minus three that causes a zero for uh, the y value. So it's kind of tricky. If those are different factors than the factors on top, we take a three and, and negative five, but because it's not defined even at x equals three, that is not part of the game. It's out of the domain. So only at x equals negative five. Number 36. State any vertical asymptote. Any vertical asymptote. If none, then write no vertical asymptote. Well, we did factor this just a minute ago. That's a 4 times x minus 3 times x plus 5 over x minus 3 and x plus 3. The vertical asymptotes only happens when a factor like this in the denominator makes a 0. This right here will give us a vertical asymptote. So we have vertical asymptote at x equals negative three, which is the zero of this factor. At this zero, which is caused by x minus three, at x equals three, we don't have a vertical asymptote. It's a removable discontinuity or a hole in the graph. So the vertical asymptote only occurs on the zeros of the factors in the denominator that do not cancel out. Only at this factor being equal to zero, which leads you to x equals negative three. That's a vertical asymptote. That should do it for 36. 37. Given the function, state any horizontal asymptotes. For horizontal asymptotes, looking at this right here, if you uh, multiply it, I have x to the second minus 3x and positive 2x, sorry, positive 5x is positive 2x. Uh, one more time. 5x take away 3x is positive 2x. 5 times negative 3 is negative 15. All over x to the second minus 9. And if you simplify this even more, I get the following. 4x to the second. 4 times 2, that's 8x. 4 times 15 with the minus, of course, we don't want to miss that, uh, 60. All over x to the second minus 9. What we have here is, we look at the leading term of the numerator and the leading term of the denominator. Since we have the same degree of the numerator and the denominator, which is 2, 
the horizontal asymptote is y equals 4 over 1 which is 4 where do you get the 4 it's the leading coefficient the leading coefficient of the leading term on top divided by the leading coefficient of the leading term at the prom side that's if we have the same degree so we do have a horizontal asymptote at y equals negative uh, 4 sorry at 4 number 38 given this function state the x-intercepts for the x-intercepts we need to set y equal to 0 and these are not common factors to set y equal 0 it happens from having the numerator equal to 0 which leads us to two x-intercepts x1 equals 2 that comes from here and the second one negative 3 two x-intercepts because if x equals 2 that's going to be 2 minus 2 which is 0 0 times something is 0 0 divided by anything also 0 the y value for the function will be 0 that's number 38 number 39 state the y-intercept for the y-intercept we need to set x equal to 0 but this right here is 4 times x minus 3 times x plus 5 over x minus 3 times x plus 3 for the x into uh, the y intercept to set x equal to 0 that's going to be 0 here 0 right here 0 right here and 0 right here so it ends up 4 times negative 3 times 5 all over negative 3 times 3 we could cancel this we end up with 4 times 5 which is 20 divided by 3 number 40 given the function state the domain the domain comes from zeros caused by the denominator so the domain is all real numbers except 2 and negative 3 we have here a vertical asymptote and here because it's also mentioned here we have a removable discontinuity which is called differently a hole in the graph so everything except 2 and negative 3 is our domain number 41 given the function state the removable discontinuity which i just talked about that happens from here that's a removable discontinuity so we have a removable discontinuity at x equals 2 that's a quick one 42 state any vertical asymptote asymptotes if none then write no vertical asymptote the vertical asymptote comes from zeros in the denominator only that is a hole in the graph we don't talk about that here we just mentioned that in the previous problem so vertical asymptote at x equals negative 3. number 43 given the function f of x equal state any horizontal asymptote well this one right here is a third degree you could multiply the x's i'm not going to do that right here that's not the point so we have 7x to the third and more terms on top of the leading term right here is going to end up 5x to the second 
So the degree here is one more than the degree of the denominator. So that is a slant asymptote, not a horizontal or vertical. So no horizontal asymptote. If you need to know more about slant asymptotes, I will link it at the end of the video. I have a separate video just for slant asymptotes. That is 43. Number 44, uh, state the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts comes from y equals 0. So we're looking at when the numerator equals 0. But the problem here is we need to pay attention to this factor. This is a common factor. That is not part of the domain. It's a hole in the graph. So at first you might say like x equals 2, x equals negative 4, and x equals 6. But x equals 2 is not part of the domain. We have a hole in the graph at x equals 2. So state the x-intercepts. The x-intercepts are x1 equals negative 4 and x2 equals 6. That's do it for 44. Number 45. Try to keep it in the frame. State the y-intercept. The y-intercept comes when x equals 0. So x should equal to 0. Which comes from setting the numerator equals to 0. Sorry, went too fast. So imagine if this is 0, 0, 0, 0, and 0. For 45, just plug them in. We have 7 times negative 2, 0 minus 2 is negative 2, and I have 4, and I have negative 6, all over 5 multiplied by negative 2, multiplied by uh, 3, and I have it simplified to negative 56 over 5, which is 11.2 uh, negative. So the x the y-intercept is at 0, negative 11.2. The key concept is setting x equals 0. Number 46. Given the function, state the domain, range, and asymptote, then sketch the graph of f of x. To do that, we need to look for the basics. 3 to the x goes like this. At 1, when you go 3 to the x minus 2, the graph will be shifted to the right 2 units. So that's a key point. You could find another key point, which is plug in 0, you get 1. Sorry, uh, plug in 1, you get 3. So 1, 3. So to make it more detailed, that's 0, 1. There is another point right here. 1 will give you 3. Those two key points will move to the right 2 units. Then we're going to move the graph up 1 unit. To show you more details, here's 3 to the x. This is what I mean by the key points. 0, 1 and 1, 3. So by shifting the graph to the right two units we do have the following you could see that this point moved to the right two units and this point right here moved right two units now shifting the graph up one unit first we are moving the red graph to the right two units we're moving the red graph to the right, two units to the blue one, and then we're moving up one unit. So this point became right here, and this point became right here. The green one is our graph. Okay? That should do it. If you need more details, let's just focus on at least one point and see what happens. For the red one, the red one, 3 to the x, 
a key point is 0, 1. For the blue one, after we move it to the right two units, that's going to be 3 to the x minus 2. Moving this point, key point, to the right two units, that will be 2, comma 1. For the green one, which is 3 to the power x minus 2, and shifting it up one unit, that's not going to be 2, 1, that's going to be 2, 2. And that is our point 2, 2. Same thing for the other point. That should do it for this problem. Let's go over 47. Condense the given logarithmic into a single logarithm. We're going to take the 4 back, the 1 third back, the 2 back in one step. We talked about this earlier, so let's move on. Log x to the 4 minus log y to the 1 third, which is cubic root of y, plus log z to the second. We have rules that says log minus log, same base, of course, will be 1 log with the quotient of x to the 4 divided by the cubic root of y. Since we're not touching this for now, we could uh, postpone to another step. The sum becomes 1 log with a multiplication. Multiplying this argument by this argument, it will be 1 log, same base, they're all common log, which is base 10. Multiplying this by this, we could put them as one fraction. z to the second over cubic root of y. That should do it. Three more questions. Determine the zeros and whether the multiplicity of each zero is exactly one, odd, or even. That is an even. This is 1 because it crosses. And this flattens, then crosses. That's odd. So even bounces. Crosses, that's 1, exactly 1. And odd flattens, then crosses. Uh, I'm trying to save you some time. Uh, I could write at x equals 1 and x equals 3 and x equals 5, but you could see it and we'll move on. Uh, same graph, but now they need end behavior. The end behavior is as x approaches positive infinity, as you go right, your function takes you all the way up, so we say up to infinity. As x goes to negative infinity, the graph also takes you up. So we'll say positive infinity. We don't have to write the positive, but just to emphasize that it's not negative, they're both going up to infinity. Uh, the last question, number 50. State a possible degree of the following function. We say this is odd, uh, sorry, even. This could be 2, could be 4, could be 6. I don't want to make it more details because I could do that by looking at some other point and plug it in to find. But I do have the answer and I build it myself, but let's just move on. This would be 1. We talked about that and that will be odd. So how would you write it down? A times x minus 1 even times x minus 3, my second 0. And that is uh, uh, 1, exactly 1. I don't have to write the 1, but I'm just doing it for uh, to make it clear. And at 5, we have x minus 5 flattened odd. That is 3. Let's add the exponents. 2 and 1, 3 and 3, 6. So a degree of 6 with a positive leading coefficient. Let's take a equals 1. Opens up because we want to make sure that we're stating that it's positive. That opens up on both sides and doesn't open down. So 
that should do it. Let me see if I have something in my notes for it. Actually, uh, the one I did is A equals 2. So this is exactly A equals 2. You're not asked to find the exact value of A, but you're supposed to say A is positive. Anything. That's why, to be on the safe side, it says a possible degree. The degree is 6, 3, and 1, and 2 will add up to 6. If you multiply it, we're not going to multiply it, of course, but that will give you a leading term with a degree of 6. Opens up both sides, and that's A is positive. The focus is on the degree, and that's 6. I think that should do it. It's a lengthy review, 50 questions, quick 50 questions that covers enough concepts. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button and subscribe. And I'll see you next time. Thank you.